Hi guys, and welcome to this presentation. I'm Anaïs Alain, and I'm a research scientist at the University of Liège in Belgium. Today, we will explore some recent exciting works in the field of driver monitoring using artificial intelligence. Let's go! If you are a driver, I'm sure there have been times when you felt a little sleepy and struggled to stay awake and focused on the road. Or when you've been distracted by your phone because you were texting to say that you are stuck in traffic and that you will be late. Well, that's exactly when a driver monitoring system can simply save your life. But autonomous cars will soon drive themselves, right? So what's the point of driver monitoring? Well, true. But right now, partially autonomous cars still need the full attention of the driver, at least in some specific situation. According to the Wall Street Journal, we are still decades away from fully autonomous cars on every street corner. And until the driver becomes totally useless, a driver monitoring system is needed to ensure safety. The SAE Visual Chart defines six levels of driving automation, from no automation at all to full automation. The table describes the role of each of the three key actors in the driving task. The driver, the driver support features, and the automated driving features. But it does not mention any driver monitoring system. In the future, Driver monitoring will be increasingly linked to driving automation. That's why I will present the role of driver monitoring at each of the six levels by adding a row to the table. From level 0 to 2, the driver is responsible for the driving task, but he may be aided by a number of driver support features, such as automatic emergency braking, adaptive cruise control, and lane centering. So, at these levels, a driver monitoring system should be used continuously to ensure that the driver is able to perform the driving task at all times, but appropriate vehicle-related indicators should be used. For instance, the speed of the car cannot be used as an indicator of the state of the driver if an adaptive cruise control is regulating this speed. With an increasing number of driver support features in vehicles, indicators related to the vehicle become less and less relevant for monitoring the state of the driver. But driver-related parameters remain reliable indicators. At any of levels 3 to 5, the driver is no longer in charge of the driving task when automated driving features are engaged, and the driver does not need to supervise them. But at level 3, the driver must, at all time, be fallback ready. That means that the driver must take over the control of his vehicle when there is a request. A driver monitoring system is thus needed for two things. One, assessing whether the current state of the driver allows him to take over the control of his vehicle if requested now or in the near future. And two, monitoring the state of the driver as long as he is in charge of the driving task. At level 4, the vehicle can only drive under limited conditions, but it will not require the driver to respond within some specified time delay to a takeover request. However, the driver may choose to take the wheel even if he is not forced to. A driver monitoring system is thus still needed to check whether the state of the driver allows him to drive safely. At level 5, the driving is fully automated under all possible conditions, and no driver monitoring system is required, as the driver is never in control. The driver actually becomes a simple passenger of the vehicle and can relax. But what is a driver monitoring system exactly? Driver monitoring can be described in two steps. The first one characterizes the state of the driver, and the second one decides what safety actions should be taken based on the state of the driver. Taking into account the driver, the vehicle and the driving environment, we can collect data, typically signals or images, using one or more sensors. Then, 
algorithms extract relevant indicators to finally obtain the level of the state of interest. From the literature, we identified five main states, drowsiness, mental workload, distraction, emotions, and under the influence. The first four states are not precisely defined and cannot be measured directly, unlike physical quantities such as time or distances. And even if the fifth state can be defined precisely, at least in the case of alcohol, the measurement of its level requires asking the driver to blow in a device or to be blood tested. This cannot be performed at all time and is a highly invasive procedure. As you can see, we cannot directly measure these levels in any simple way. This is why indicators related to the driver, the vehicle and the environment are essential. Let's give a few examples. Using a camera facing the driver, we can collect images of his face, from which we can extract the eye blinking frequency, which is an indicator of drowsiness. Traffic density is an indicator of mental workload. If the road is congested, the driver has a lot more information to process, which increases his mental workload. The lane discipline, or how well the driver stays in his lane, is an indicator of drowsiness and distraction, as drowsy or distracted drivers can cause the car to drift. The heart rate is an indicator of emotions, such as stress, for instance. And finally, the breathing rate and pupil diameter are indicators of driving under the influence. One main advantage of these indicators is to prevent algorithms from going directly from raw sensor data to driver characterization, or in other words, directly from the input to the output. Such systems are often called black boxes because we have no idea how they work internally. In the general field of artificial intelligence, there is currently a real need to move towards more explainability, especially when safety is at stake. And this is precisely what the use of indicators provides in this case. They allow a better understanding of the decisions that driver monitoring system may take. However, we need to keep in mind that indicators may be imperfect. There exist complex interrelationship between each state and its indicators. So it is important to use as many indicators as possible to promote a valid and reliable interpretation of the state of the driver. Finally, the literature on driver monitoring focuses almost exclusively on characterizing the present state of the driver based on its recent past. This may be an issue if the system hands the control over to the driver, even though he might be falling asleep or getting distracted in a few seconds. A driver monitoring system using only past information may not have sufficient lead time to take proper emergency action, like issuing an alarm or taking back control of the vehicle. A major missing link in current driver monitoring research and development is thus the true prediction of the future state of the driver, at least a few tens of seconds into the future. If you want to know more about the different techniques that exist to characterize the state of a driver, feel free to check the paper we wrote on the subject. The link is in the description below. We made a complete synthesis of the various indicators and sensors you may use for that purpose. Thank you for watching the video until the end. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and share the video. Feel free to contact me in the comments if you have any questions on the subject. I'll be happy to answer them. See you next time!